Hello, Chloe Kim. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing, girl? I'm good. Hanging. Uh, hanging in. Well, I want to just start this off by um, saying, I, hi, I'm Gretchen Blyler, and just want to thank our sponsor, REI, for supporting POW and this episode. Um, and then... Chloe, I'm going to introduce you a little bit. I feel like you don't need introduction, but I'm going to do it anyway. So Chloe Kim. Um, Chloe Kim is an Olympic gold medalist in snowboarding halfpipe. Um, she earned a 98.25 on her third and final run of the 2018 Winter Olympics and became the youngest woman in history to win an Olympic snowboarding gold medal. That, that's pretty badass, Chloe. Um, <laughs> Thank you. you have a really long bio, so I'm just gonna like scroll through some of these things and, and talk about the things that really caught my eye, which is, um, what else? 20, 2018 proved to be more than just about podiums for Chloe. As an advocate for anti-bullying and female empowerment, Chloe was chosen by Barbie to be a part of the More Role Models movement, where they created the first Asian Barbie doll after her, Barbie Shiro. That's so cool. <laughs> Actually, back in the day, Chloe, I also worked with Barbie and had a Barbie. Uh, no way. Me. So that's awesome. That's the cool thing we have in common, right there. I mean. It feels pretty good to have a Barbie uh, created after you, right? I mean, it does feel pretty good. It's definitely like something that I'm super proud of. <laughs> um, she's the first woman to land back to back 1080s and to score a perfect 100 in competition. Um, I mean, it goes on and on. I'll read this last part. You've been featured on Forbes 30 under 30 list in 2017, Time 30 Most Influential Teens of 2016 and 2017, and SB, ESPNW's 2015 Impact 25 list. Um, she's won three ESPYs in 2018 and a Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Sports Award, two Morris World Sports Awards, and has been on the covers of Sports Illustrated, Sports Illustrated Kids, and ESPN Magazine. And Chloe, how old are you? I am 20. I just turned 20. When's your birthday? April. April 23rd. Hmm. I know. Are you an Aries? Really? Yeah. Are you an Aries um, or? I'm a Taurus. You're a Taurus. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. We're, we just got split up. Yeah. Man. <laughs> I feel like being an Aries would be cool, but <laughs> it, is. it is what it is. Uh, and now you are a new member of Protect Our Winters and the Protect Our Winters Alliance and uh, a new member of the Outdoor State, which is very exciting. Um, I think, you know, the Outdoor State to me is, it's a very cool concept of knowing that this isn't just like an exclusive club of people, but this is, uh, you know, the outdoor state is a group of people who are sort of not defined by borders of state, but defined by the things that we care most about, defined by our outdoor places and the places where we like to go outside and connect and become inspired and find purpose and meaning and fulfillment. Um, and everybody does that in different ways, right? Not just on a snowboard. Right, yeah. I think, um, I, first of all, so excited to be a part of POW. I, I'm so happy that, um, you know, I decided to do something and actually, like, be a part of the group. So I'm so stoked. Um, but, yeah, I think for me, it was kind of a tricky situation in a sense that, like, I thought that, I needed to be super educated, like a professional on the topic when it came to climate change to be able to make an impact. But then I quickly learned that that's not necessarily true. Like it is important to educate ourselves, but even doing like little things helps so much. Like I stopped using 
water bottles. I encourage my family to stop using plastic water bottles and we all have like reusable like waters now and like even that is just so much. I'll try to be aware of um, what I do in my everyday life, even like turning the lights off or like making sure I don't leave the water running for longer than I need it to and all of that. So yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I'm no, nervous. I really hear that. I hear what you're saying around sort of the fear around, oh, if I join this outdoor state or if I join POW, I have to I have to be an expert. I have to have some credentials. Um, I have to have done something to be an advocate. And I think that is what a lot of us feel. It's, I know absolutely how I felt um, when I, well, how, how I still feel. It's still the voice that I have to remember is not true. Um, the voice that says, you're not an expert, you don't know enough, there's someone who has far more credentials than you. Um, I think that voice in my head is always going to be there. And um, I just want to say good for you for ignoring that voice and saying, you know what, I do care. I am someone who spends a lot of time outside in our great outdoors and it has given me a lifestyle and a way of life that is so important to me. And that right there is enough. Like that passion is everything. And I think that is a huge message of this outdoor state too, is that our passion can be turned into purpose um, through the help of Protect Our Winters and through mobilizing together. Um, you know, 50, apparently 50 million people make up the outdoor state space. It's already, it already exists. And so it's POW's work to just bring us all together so that we can use our voice and our power um, to create the change we want to see. Yeah. So thank you for your leadership. <laughs> and something that's pretty, it can be very uncomfortable, right? So you, you said you were a little hesitant. What actually made you uh, take the step of joining and saying, I'm, I'm going to do this anyway? I think for me, it was I really wanted to get more educated on the topic. And I feel like getting educated on something is really tricky when you feel like you're doing it alone. Um, but, you know, obviously, like you're a part of POW and uh, so many of my friends or fellow competitors are part of POW. And I feel like that definitely was like super intriguing to me. And it made me even more interested in wanting to join. And then, you know, I met a bunch of um, the members and a bunch of the people that work for work with POW and for POW and I just completely fell in love with you know just the community so I was like let's do it I'm down hell yeah amazing well and that's what I love about you you are always you know you come across as this like sweet bubbly girl which you are but there is also a fierceness to you Chloe Kim that <laughs> I don't know if everybody experiences it, but I have because I have competed against you. <laughs> and so the fury that is sweet Chloe Kim is real. And I love that combination. And I think it's that combination that it takes to sort of stand up for the things that, that we believe in, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I think like, I'm still super intimidated. I'm still like really nervous doing this right now because I feel like you know I don't know what I'm doing but like you said I have to keep reminding myself that as long as I'm aware of my actions and I'm you know passionate about fighting fighting this fight I think it's all I need to do and from here on out it's just all progress it's like you know the more I educate myself the more I'll know and like the more experienced I'll be and the more I'll be able to impact so I don't know it just really motivates me to learn yeah I, I hear that. I hear that. And I think that um, POW has been such a, a hub for me to come to to educate myself because I think climate change, it, it's such a big issue um, that it does require us to stay up, stay up on our reading and, and, and the latest and the greatest. And I know that um, everyone at POW and the research POW is doing and the information they're getting out to us as the outdoor state, um, this is the information that's most relevant and, and most um, 
yeah, relevant to who we are and how we can use our level as outdoor sports people to create change. Um, and, you know, as we're having this discussion, I just, I cannot um, help but also bring in sort of the state of affairs that are going on in our nation right now and the uprising of Black Lives Matter and racial injustice. Um, and I checked out your Instagram the other day and uh, saw that you had posted like a very beautiful ad from Nike, who is one of your sponsors. Um, and I was so proud of you for posting that because, you know, just posting that is um, taking a stance and, and saying something in a way that is putting your neck out on the line. You have a lot of people who follow you. Think what do you have? How many followers on Instagram do you have, Chloe? You have a lot. I don't even know. <laughs> 684,000 followers. Okay. So obviously anything you say could be taken and torn apart a million different ways, or it could be supported and prized all at the same time. But I saw, you know, I saw about 103 comments that came out of that post. Um, some were super supportive. Others were not. Um, yeah. Specifically sort of the call out as you being an Asian American, a call out from the Asian community. Like, yeah, you don't care about us. You know, you know like how. And for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, just maybe check out Chloe's Instagram and 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 see what I'm talking about. But um, I really wanted to ask you, Chloe, I mean, how how did that make you feel? How did that make you feel? One, standing up for something that you clearly believe in, and then two, yeah. sort of getting the the full gamut of comment commentary. You know, I I could go on and on and on about this. Um, and I always was super afraid to like speak up about this particular situation because I know that it could kind of go both ways. Like people might either love me after this or hate me, but I've kind of gotten to a point where I don't really care about what people think. I genuinely like come from, you know, a good place and I genuinely want equality for everyone. So like, yes, I, I mean, I grew up in the States as a little, you know, Korean American girl, I've learned about racism when I was like a child, like six, five, six, because, you know, my parents were getting treated differently. I was getting treated differently. My dad would get harassed. My mom would get like looked down on by other people because she was Korean. She was Asian. And um, like I was aware of this, but I also... I feel like that whole example going on with the Band-Aid thing, at the end of the day, we're all fighting the same fight. We just want to, we don't want racism anymore. We want that to end. We want equality for all. But what I see is I'm not seeing, like, Asian Americans getting killed by police officers on a day, like, constantly. Like, I'm not seeing, like, you know, yes, racism is a really big problem for Asians as well, but... I'm not afraid when I go out and I see an officer. I'm not afraid for my life, but that's not the same for, you know, like the black community. And it's just like something where it's like, I understand, but at the same time, there's, you know, we, the Band-Aid example, you know, like if one person's bleeding, then that person's gonna get the Band-Aid and then, you know, it's like you go from there. But I don't know, I feel like I like blabbered, but I'm just, there's a lot of emotion in that. But I completely agree. I feel like I should speak more about the injustices that um, Asian Americans do face or Asian people do face, the racism, the discrimination, like all of that. I definitely feel like I should speak up more about that. And I think like I also am learning throughout this whole process. So now I'm more you know, aware of that's something that I should do in the future. But I think right now it's more important to prioritize everything that's going on right now. 100%. I, and I, you're not blabbering at all. Um, you are just, I just want to acknowledge you for, for your voice and for your courage and for your willingness to continue to say, I'm learning 
and I'm continuing to learn because that's that's what I'm doing too. And I think that's what, if we're all being honest right now, that's what all of us are saying is we're learning. We're learning through this. And, um, and I think the more we can have honest conversations together around these things, I think this is actually start, this is the ripple effect of change that we need to see. Um, you know, for me, like you're saying, you know, I, I have the potential to talk more to, um, you know, the story of racial justice when it comes to Asian Americans. Um, for me, a, a sort of a big realization that I've had over the past weeks is, um, you know, my story of, of climate change has been has been a bit limited. It, it's been um, focusing on, um, on on the global concept of, you know, our planet is suffering from carbon pollutions, burning of fossil fuels. Um, our ecosystem is, is completely out of balance. Um, our oceans, our corals are dying, the ocean acidification, talking it from such a sort of macro level, um, which it, it's true that's happening. And, and to, to want to protect and to save our public lands to um, maintain them as sources of inspiration and creativity and protect them against being commodities for wealth and power. I still believe in these things. And I think for me, there has there is more opportunity to speak directly to and black people, minorities, people of color are the ones who are suffering the, the health effects and um, the worst effects of climate change as these effects get worse and worse right now. These people are the ones who are suffering first and worse. And I think if we're gonna be a voice for, um, for the planet, we also have to be a voice for the people. And so I have had, you know, definitely a more, more of an awakening around my own blind spots as this experience has been happening in our country. And so I can say just as much as you can say that I am learning and I'm growing and, and you know what, the more we can say that, the more articles we can read, um, the more we can, can connect these these issues, you know, these issues of environmental injustice, racial injustice with climate change, because they're absolutely connected. The more our, our passions, the things, the issues we care so much about, they, they intersect and they connect. So there's more opportunity to work together yeah. in these things, which to me is exciting. Yeah, you're right. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Tell me about, you know, from from your standpoint, um, you know, what what can we do right now besides having these 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 conversations, um, which one I think is are very important to have. But um, you know, from your perspective, you're 20 years old, your generation, because um, we're definitely in different generations. Like, what is what is it that we can do together to, to stand up for the health of our people and our planet? I think I'm, I have a lot of faith in my generation. I feel like we've definitely helped a lot of change happen. We, I'm just really proud of all my peers who have like really stood up and um, fought for change. I think it's very, very inspirational. Um, but honestly, I think that we, it makes me a little scared, right? Because I feel like when we do something about a situation, it's almost too late. And I definitely don't want that to be the case with our environment, with our world, you know, with our homes. Um, so I feel like we really need to get the word out there that, you know, we need to change something about the way we live or what we do or else we're not going to be able to live in this beautiful world anymore. It's going to be toast. And I feel like 
we really need to, you know, just get that word out and make people see it, like make people understand that this is actually a really serious issue. And it's not something you just sweep under the rug, because that's something people tend to do a lot as well. And I just think we really need to prioritize this as well. Yeah, I hear that. I and and isn't it isn't it a terrible thing that most often as human beings, it takes sort of crisis to get us yeah. to change our habits. Yeah, and I think I, you know the pandemic, for example. I know, and it's crazy, but I think I mean this pandemic is horrible, and I I can't believe it happened. You know, it was so like sudden and out of the blue, and here we are now. But I think you know we can we see that people are able to change the way they live. You know, um, obviously for good reasons. You know, like everyone should stay safe, um, but I'm just saying like it is possible. So I think you know, we'll be able to have or like, you know, encourage people to change their daily routines just a little bit to help the environment out a little bit, you know, help Mother Nature out of it, you know. Um, so yeah, I feel like I feel like we got this. <laughs> yeah. And I think I mean, you're specifically speaking to like habits, right? And all of us because of the pandemic, we're sort of forced to change. It was a forced change habit because of a crisis. Um, but now we, now that we have been in quarantine, a lot of us for, for so long, um, we, we have created new habits, right? Like I think everybody has been eating home, home at more, probably more than they ever have. Maybe eating yeah. their family more than they ever have. Um, yeah. Not using their cars as much as they ever have. So, it, and you know, at POW, we're not necessarily saying we wanna take away um, like the abundance and the creativity that it is to be humans and that we need to go back to this lack way of living. But um, there are, you know, what I'm hearing you say are that there are little steps we can all take um, to create new habits that, that are in alignment with this direction of living in a world where um, the health of our environment is in our mind as we're making choices. And I think, you know, you're actually like a perfect example of how any human being can can make these changes. Because I remember seeing you at 13 years old uh, back in Mammoth with that, you know, maybe your, the very first helmet you had with the, the guard. Face guard. <laughs> and I remember seeing you. I remember seeing you ripping. You were you were even ripping at that point. But that 13 year old girl, every single day made decisions and, and worked, you worked your ass off every single day. You trained, you, I don't know if you ate the right food, you hydrated, whatever you did, like you made small systematic changes from 13 until where you are now to go from 13 year old Chloe to 20 year old Chloe who is the youngest Olympic snowboarding gold medalist in history, right? Yeah. Like that didn't happen overnight. Yeah. And I think, you know, that's something that I think a lot of people assume is what they have to do in order to, you know, make change happen. It, I feel like it, you know, it's not like, <laughs> it's not like a pandemic. Like it's not all of a sudden, like you can't do all of these things because blah, blah, blah. I mean, like I do, that would be cool, but realistically it's going to be an accumulation of really small changes. You're going to be changing your daily routine. You're going to be more conscious of what you're doing and, um, you know, being more attentive to detail in a sense. So I think, yeah, I feel like everyone can definitely be able to have the ability to make positive change happen. And like I said, over and over, like you don't have to be an expert, just be aware of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Conscious of reaction. Beautiful. Well, and on that note, you had talked a little bit about um, taking action, taking small action. And um, I just, I think it was just last week. It's hard right now. There's been so much going on. It feels like a lifetime ago. But I think it was just last week. Um, I was a part of Protect Our Winters lobby camp. 
where we virtually went to Capitol Hill and met with senators and Congress people um, around, you know, climate change and around some very specific asks for how we move forward from this pandemic crisis. Um, and a big takeaway that I have always gotten with POW is that speaking to our leaders and holding our, our leaders accountable. And, and I'm speaking to this from the perspective of climate change and I'm speaking to this from the perspective of um, racial justice holding our, our leaders accountable to the people that they represent is a very, very powerful thing we can all do. And I'm wondering if you have ever called your, con your lawmaker to, to specifically ask them to represent you in a way that aligns with your values and the things that you care about. I haven't. I didn't even know that was a thing. That is a thing, my friend. Wait, you can call them. That is a thing. Yes. Okay. Um, and actually, we could do it right now. Really? Would you Would you be up for it? Yeah. Hang on. Okay. Let's see. So let's put in the chat. Let's put in the chat the link for... So Protect Our Winters right now has a link that you can click and it takes you to a place um, and we'll we'll take you through this right now. Okay, take me through it. All right, I'm so Jake from Plow just put the link in the chat. So pull up your chat, Chloe. Ooh, okay. Hit that I link. And by the way, everybody who's watching right now can do the exact same thing, but but Chloe's gonna be our uh, a model. Guinea pig. Guinea pig. Thank you. Thanks for being our guinea pig, Chloe. You're so welcome. And guys, you know it's five thirty uh, Mountain Time, so it's seven thirty East Coast. So odds are you're gonna get a voicemail, but that's okay. We can still do it. Um. So. Pow has really lined us up so well with a phone number to our specific representatives, um, senators and representatives. And there's a specific ask here around rebuilding our clean energy economy. Where, where are you right now, Chloe, in this? Okay, I put my info in. Okay. And now it says I'm going to get a call. Okay. So you're going to get a call, and then once you get a call, we put us on speakerphone? Yeah. Do you have the script that Pal has? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you yeah. literally can, like, read from that script and leave a message. Who's your, who's your uh, representative that you're calling? Or you're not there yet? Um, oh, Senator Catherine Cortez Masto, and then Senator Jacqueline Rosen, and Alice Titus. Awesome. My, the Vegas squad. Um, so this is exciting because you are building a relationship with um, leaders who represent you in California, right? Like these are these are your representatives. And I think too often we as civilians feel like we don't have access to these people or we don't understand them, so we don't know how to talk to them. But the truth is these are our representatives. They should be representing us. And if we don't call them, um, they won't know who they're representing and what, what we care about. So this action right here is one of the most impactful things we can all do besides also voting. Yes, I agree. Wait, I really want them to call me. Why is it taking so long? Um, <laughs> I'm like looking at my phone. <laughs> are they going to call or are they going to text? I think they're going to call. It says I'm going to get a call. Okay. And yes, Stephen, that was a reusable straw. I love these. 
It's my okay. This is like my favorite way to drink water. <laughs> How are you drinking water, Gretchen? What's your? I'm drinking water. Actually, I'm drinking tea, ginger tea. My, my Alex tumbler. This is a little shameless plug. This is my company, Alex. We make reusable. Oh. Reusable products. Amazing. We're gonna have to send you some since you're a new reusable product person. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Please do. Yeah, no. So I've been doing the mason jar with yep. like a metal straw. Love it. I didn't like these at first because I thought they tasted weird. But then this combo right here is like the best cup of water I've ever had. So someone's saying that I need to click the call now button, but I think. Oh, got it. Okay. Okay, I'm ready. All right, let's do this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You got okay, this, Chloe. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Go, go, Wait, do go, I, should go. I read? Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, you can read the script. I mean. Special climber and protect our Winners Alliance member, Tommy Caldwell. I am so thankful and excited that you have decided to join me in taking a minute to call your lawmakers to let them know that rebuilding a clean energy economy is a critical part of protecting the places and lifestyles we love from climate change. We'll connect you to your representative and your senators. Just press star when you're done with one call to start the next. Please press star to be connected now. Yeah. This is we'll now connect you to Alice Titus. After your call is done, press star and we'll connect you to your next official. Wait, I got scared. I, I got scared. Wait, so... No! We're doing this. We're doing, We're doing this. Did you okay, hang okay, up? Okay. 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 Let's yeah. do it again. But it's okay. I understand. <laughs> it's okay. 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 I swear it's just like the first time you learn a new trick, Chloe. Like you do it and you're like, oh, well, that's not fair. You got this, girl. You got this. Let them know that rebuilding a clean energy economy is a critical part of protecting the places and lifestyles we love from climate change. We'll connect you to your representative and your senators. Just press star when you're done with one call to start the next. Okay. All right. this, Chloe. It's time to enter your five digit zip code so we can get started. You entered 89109. That's if this is correct, press one to try it. We'll now connect you to. Alice Titus, after your call is done, press star and we'll connect you Let's to remember, your next official. She's your representative. Hmm? She's your representative. Yes. You want to see Hello, her? this is Dana Titus, representative for Nevada's first district. Thank you so much for calling my office in Washington. The capital operator is only available. Do I have to sound scary? Like, no. Sound like awesome, badass badass code. Hello, my name is Chloe and my zip code is 89109. I'm a member of Protect Our Winters and I'm also part of the Outdoor State. That's a community of 50 million skiers, bikers, climbers, hikers, runners, and many of us, like me, really care about protect protecting the places and lifestyles we love from the impacts of climate change. We can do just that by investing in our nation's clean energy economy. Rebuilding the clean energy economy is critical given the project cancellations and supply chain disruptions due to the pandemic and the nearly 600,000 job losses the sector has reported. It's a proven sustainable job market and we can rebuild the project pipeline, pipeline and put Americans back to work. 89% of voters support extending tax incentives for solar, wind and energy storage. It's time to get these incentives across the finish line and help the clean energy economy get back on track. Please support the Renewable Energy Extension Act, the, Drive, the Driving America Forward Act, and a direct pay program to rebuild the clean energy economy and any further stimulus or infra infrastructure packages. Thank you. Woo! <laughs> Yay! You did it! Thank you. Oh my cool. god, I got so scared. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, that was incredible, Chloe. That was incredible. Thank you. Thank you. Did it kind of feel like learning a new trick for the first time? Yeah, that was cool. Like, 
I always get so scared to like call people or like leave a voicemail like I never do but like that was nice like that was a good one yeah did I mean how did it feel you feel a little bit more empowered would that be accurate? I do feel empowered and I actually really did like that script because it made like I learned while I was reading it but also like it made me seem like I knew what I was talking about because I feel like if I were to try to do that without a script I would have been like please help us <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know and you know next time you could even say hey i'm chloe kim olympic gold medalist i am your constituent you know like rock yeah. it own it yeah you know those, okay. those accomplishments that you have earned now you can use you know you sometimes they use you right sometimes you can get spun out from them and pulled in a million different directions Mm -hmm. And you can also use that accomplishment for to do good in the world. And I highly, highly suggest that you do that. I would love to do that. I'm going to pull that card a little more. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, the, it's the good of the people and the good of the planet. Yeah. You and, know, I'm like really excited about this because I, I've always wanted to do good. And I feel like Pa has really guided me to you know, do do just that and actually make a positive change, especially during these unprecedented times and all of this <laughs> shit going down. <laughs> I just hate, like, it's crazy. So um, that felt good. That was like a good positive. I'm so glad. And I'm just, and I'm proud of you for doing it in front of all of us too. But I knew you could handle it. You've got courage. <laughs> I literally hung up the first time. <laughs> so everybody who's watching, uh, know that if you have to hang up the first, second, maybe even third time, Chloe Kim also had to. <laughs> it shows that you're human, Chloe. <laughs> you know, that's all right. I have I have social anxiety too, so it's it's fine. Yeah, I'm scared of phone calls. Well, I mean, I know our time is kind of coming to an end. Um, and I just, I think a big action item I want to throw out there is, um, you know, just exactly what you just did. Everybody on the call um, can do. The, the link is in the chat. Um, also, if you're not already a part of the outdoor state, uh, right now you can text six five three five one and text outdoor state to the number six five three five one and um you know i just think this is a community of people who are forever learners who know that we're doing the best we can and know that we can always do better but also the more we come together and the more we mobilize around these issues we care so much about the more change we can affect and the more we can live in a in this world that we wish to see and i'm honored chloe to be in this with you Yay. <laughs> how about you do you have any last thoughts before we let these people go I feel like I didn't, you asked me so many questions, but like everyone wants to know your story too. Like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> how's life after your amazing snowboarding career? Like, have you been hanging out, like having fun? Like, have you been snowboarding a lot? You know, I still love to snowboard. I think uh, I, I will always love snowboarding. It's definitely shifted from riding half pipes in the park to getting out more on my split board and getting in the back country and riding powder um, mm -hmm. and that's just something i love i really there's nothing more i think that i love than like climbing a mountain um and also snowboarding down but i really love being outside in nature climbing mountains um and Transition from competitive snowboarding was definitely way harder than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Um, and I've, I've definitely given myself the space to slowly take steps towards this next path. Um, but I've always been involved in, in lots, like even when I was competing. I, I created um, Alex Bottle, our sustainable lifestyle company way back in 2009 and that's you know that's what i'm sipping from right now amazing 
And I've been working with POW really since 2009 as well. So the things that have continued. Um, and then there's new things too. Um, and I specifically, I just want to call it out because you had the courage to talk today about maybe something uncomfortable that you've experienced just in terms of the culture that you grew up with um, as a Korean American. Um, my dog, my dog, my soul dog, who's been with me by my side for the past 10 years, passed away last night. And last night? Yeah. So um, I was really tempted to not come on this call today because it's been a really emotional time, but I knew that this would make me feel better. And I also know that um, it's very easy to sort of isolate when you're going through hard experiences. But what Coda has taught me is that it's through all of this, like we need to maintain the things that we care about. We need to keep taking steps forward as hard as they may feel um, because it helps us and it helps us, helps the causes we care about. So um, that's where I am today. And I know that a lot of our hearts are heavy. And I know that a lot of us are feeling tired right now. And um, I just want to say that I think we can do this together, you know, keep supporting and lifting one another up in these things we care so much about and look to the commonalities and not the, um, the divisiveness. Jesus, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I wish I could give you a hug. Oh my I'm God. not a virtual hug, Chloe. Well, we love you so much. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, and, you know, always here for you if you need anything. Ah, uh, thanks. Um, so feel free. <laughs> All, right, All right, guys. Well, thank you to everybody who joined us today. Thanks for everybody who is with us in the outdoor state. And let's keep putting one foot in front of the other in a way that as, is as positive, uplifting, and empowered as it can be. All right. Thanks for coming, guys. It was uh, hopefully, hopefully you all enjoyed and had a good time. And uh, yeah, thanks, Gretchen. You're the best. I miss you. Love you, Chloe. I miss Love you, you too. So <laughs> all right. Bye, guys. Bye.